This video will contain spoilers for the show, so I'm letting you know now as I don't want to ruin it for you, so you've been warned. Following what was an absolutely eventful episode of Shogun in the seventh installment, the 24 seconds that we yearn for every week after the episode's been released has finally been given to us. And that's the trailer for the next episode, Episode 8. With there being a lot of suspicions being raised about if Toronaga actually had a secret plan and if Nagakado's death was essentially in vain because he wasn't filled in with the information, there are elements of the story that could well be pointing towards that. With Episode 8 being titled The Abyss of Life, there's one character in particular that sees life as an abyss, and that's Mariko Toda. So I feel this episode is going to be one that focuses on her arc a lot, and for the many people that know what's coming, that means this next episode could potentially be the biggest one yet. So I won't hold back any longer, let's get into the video and break down all that there was to take away from the Shogun Episode 8 trailer. So the trailer for the next episode opened up with a shot of Lord Ishidor speaking with Lady Ochiba and putting a proposal towards her. He said the line, I propose we strengthen our bond through marriage. I'm not gonna lie, when looking at the facial expression that Lady Ochiba had when he said that, it looked like it was the last thing that she wanted to hear in the world. Right now, Lady Ochiba is essentially the most powerful woman in the entirety of Japan, the mother of the soon-to-be Taiko. We saw a couple of episodes back what she had to go through in order to give the former Taiko a son, and it seemed like an experience that she absolutely despised. So I would imagine that now that she has that sense of freedom and the ability to wave power over people as she pleases and as she has been doing, I don't think that she'd be willing to marry Lord Ishido, as it's something that she doesn't really need. Yes, it might strengthen their stronghold and look better when in front of the people that are in support of Lord Ishido, and also help Lady Ochiba when it comes to trying to get loyalties which are in her best interest because she fears that her son and her life will be in danger if Toronaga breaks through the gates of Osaka, but I don't think she will. Lord Ishido is infatuated with Lady Ochiba, and I feel this is something that we'll continue to see being developed in the next episode. She currently controls him like a puppet master controls a puppet, and that power dynamic that she has at the moment is something that she won't want to part ways with. It's also said in the novel that she always loved Toronaga, and within episode 2 of the show, when on his deathbed, the Taiko said how Toronaga almost ended up with Lady Ochiba. So her love essentially lies with somebody else and not with Ishido, so I think she'll decline the proposal. The next part of the trailer then took us back to Izu, where we saw that John Blackthorn was speaking with Mariko as an army was getting ready and it looked like they were going to be going to Osaka. John Blackthorn said to Mariko, don't go to Osaka, to which she responded by saying, my allegiance forbids me from doing anything else. Showing that her loyalty to Lord Yoshi Toronaga is the thing that she stands by the most and values above all else. It seems as though the death of Nagakado hasn't necessarily had any negative consequences on Toronaga and that he could still be getting marched to Osaka under the watchful eye of his brother Saeki Nobutatsu. There are a lot of theories going around at the moment about Saeki and Toronaga potentially doing the Trojan horse approach on Osaka, and that could well be the case. They could have made out like Toronaga was going to be taken in as a hostage, but then once inside the walls of Osaka Castle, unleash havoc on everybody that's within there providing a slightly different approach to Crimson Sky. This would make Nagakado's death be something that was in vain, and because Toronaga didn't tell his son, he ultimately would have died for nothing and not been able to battle like he always wanted to. This is something that is very much up in the air at the moment, but it is most definitely a possibility that could be on the horizon. Let's remember as well, John Blackthorn is one of Lord Toronaga's most trusted men. I don't think there's anybody that Toronaga actually trusts more at this moment in time, because John has saved his life on several occasions and sworn loyalty to him several times too. One of the last things that John Blackthorn said was, Behold the great warlord, the brilliant master of trickery, when he got up and walked off. John Blackthorn was openly speaking this in Portuguese, well, English, but Portuguese in the context of the show something which only Mariko would have understood who was sitting there. This could be a subtle nod to the fact that Toronaga did have a plan up his sleeve and wasn't actually surrendering like was shown to us, and Blackthorn could well be in on it, so I do think we are going to see the potential reveal of Toronaga's plan in the next episode. With John Blackthorn saying to Mariko how he didn't want her to go, I think this could also be the episode where we end up seeing John Blackthorn asking Toronaga for permission for Mariko to be able to divorce her husband Todabuntaro. This is so that she can eventually go on to marry him. However, in previous iterations of Shogun, Toronaga says how that's something that won't be happening and asks for it to never be mentioned again. 
I also think that this could be the case too because we're going to be seeing the proposal also being put there between Lord Ishidor and Lady Ochiba, so it would be a good contrast to have this moment occur on the other side too. The next part of the trailer then saw Toronaga speaking with men that were in front of him. There was a concerning line which was, we cannot follow you on this path to defeat. Hiromatsu gave the filthiest side eye that I've seen in the show, but it very much looks like the men that had sworn alliance with Toronaga are beginning to question if they should be going alongside him to Osaka. This could be one of two things. It was said in the previous episode that if Toronaga surrendered to Ishido and Lady Yochiba in Osaka Castle, then half of his men would need to commit seppuku. So this could be some of Toronaga's men essentially stating that they're not prepared to do that. Or what it could be is Toronaga looking to form allies in the battle that he's going to be taking towards Osaka. And this could be a meeting with other daimyo in the surrounding area, pretty much saying that they're not going to be an ally with him. Many daimyo at the time did sit out and not pick sides when it came to the real battle of Sekigahara. And this could genuinely be the case with what's happening here. People fearing which side to choose because they don't want to end up on the losing side and the wrong side of history. Then we got to what I feel is one of the most important parts of the trailer, and that is Toronaga and Mariko meeting together. Toronaga said, now are you ready to do your part? To which Mariko didn't respond, but she simply looked up directly towards the lens of the camera, which allowed us to capture that sense of fear that was embedded within her. I'm going to be touching on what happens in the book in the 1980s miniseries here, so if you don't want to see spoilers for that, then skip to the timestamp on screen. This is where I think the title of the episode comes into the picture. Mariko's life is like she's forever sinking into the abyss. Every day that goes on, she wants to be there less and less, and she's always forbidden from carrying out seppuku, whether that be by Toronaga or her husband Toda Buntaro. So I think in this instance, Toronaga is allowing her to go to Osaka with him and to fight alongside him, which will ultimately allow her to die on the battlefield if that's something that she desires, offering her an escape from the life that she no longer wishes to hold. We know that Mariko can hold her own as we saw in the flashback a couple of episodes back. Within the 1980s miniseries, Mariko Toda ends up dying when she makes it to Osaka Castle and she gets attacked by ninjas that are working for Ishido. The sole intention of Mariko being in Osaka is to free some of the hostages that Ishido has kept up there. She ultimately sacrifices herself to allow John Blackthorn to get the hostages out of there, something which Toranaga hopes will get him more allies and get people to turn away from Lord Ishido. This is going to be a heartbreaking moment for sure. We've come to connect with the character Mariko, and John has a deep sense of love for her too. So I think it's going to be a devastating moment when we find out that she's died. However, I imagine there will be a sense of happiness within her as she'll no longer be sinking into the abyss. The retrieval of hostages in order to get more allies on Toranaga's side is something that I think will ultimately happen as within history it was said that Ishida Mutsunari lost a lot of people on his side due to the hostage situation and the death of Tamako, the person which Mariko is based on. So I think that's going to be a crucial moment in the change of direction for the show. Whilst I don't know if that will happen in the next episode, I think it could well be setting up the death of Mariko to occur in episode 9, and us understanding what she's going to be doing and why she's going to be doing it. Then after that, the trailer concluded. It looks like these next few episodes are really going to be the big ones. We all want the battle, and I believe this show has provided such great context for the epic battle of Sekigahara that we'll hopefully see on screen. Lord Toranaga and Lord Ishido face to face on the battlefield with their men just giving it their all. I can't wait to see what happens in the next episode. You just know that it's going to be a good one, as every episode is. So, there you have it. Shogun Episode 8 Trailer Explained. If you want to see more videos on Shogun, then click on the card in the top corner. I've been covering every episode of the show and I'll be continuing to do that until it concludes. So if you want to see more, then head over to the channel where you'll find a playlist. What do you think will happen next? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.